We never settle here on Football America, so we're thrilled to welcome into the show now Nikki Bandini. You've seen her before on ESPN FC. You probably read her work over at ESPN.com. Nikki joins us from Europe, so staying up late. We've been trying to get you on the show for months, Nikki. It is great to finally have you with us here on Football Americas. Welcome. It's great to be here as well, and it's a little late, but I think most uh, football journalists end up being at least a little bit night owls as well. There you go. There you go. Certainly, uh, if you're watching Football Americas, we are very much a, a night owl show. So <laughs> as you know, here in the United States, I'm sure your Twitter following over the last couple months has proven this. We are obsessed with Christian Pulisic. Uh, let's start there. I go back to the game against Napoli when he was subbed out at the half. Obviously, there was an injury concern there. But I'm following the reaction online. It's a lot of U.S. fans who are very worried. But, Nikki, there were also a lot of Milan fans that were very worried. He's gotten off to a great start there, hasn't he? What are not just the fans, but I think the Italian press saying about Pulisic's first few months in Milan? Yeah, well, it was a perfect start, wasn't it? He scored in both of his first two games. He was Captain America, which, of course, that nickname's followed him everywhere. But it's, I don't know, I think it's a bit more exciting. In, in Italy, there hasn't been a big tradition of American players. Before this re this season, there hasn't been a big tradition of American players making it in the States. So he came in, he had that fast start. And, and he absolutely did capture people's uh, attention. And he really provided Milan with something that they've been needing as well, which is some offensive balance. One of the, the big problems that Milan ran into last season is they became very predictable because they had Teo Hernandez and Rafael Leao on the left-hand side. And whenever they needed a goal, they would channel their play down those two players. And look, they're extraordinary footballers, but when you know that's what's coming as an opponent, you can adjust to it quite effectively. So Pulisic being on the right has given them much more balance. And I think individually, you could certainly say he's had a very impressive start. He's looked great. I mean, Milan's very scary in transition. You've got Leao, Hernandez, Giroud, uh, Pulisic running at you, and he seems to be fit throughout the start of this season and has Pioli's confidence, but Pioli doesn't have the confidence of the people. He's under a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. How much trouble would Christian Pulisic be if Pioli were to leave because he finally found a coach who believes in him? Yeah, I think maybe this same discussion will apply a bit to Yunus Musa as well when we get to him. But both of the Americans in Milan have been very enthusiastic about working with Pioli, about how he's been coaching them. He's been enthusiastic about them. And there has been this increasingly loud talk that Stefano Pioli's job may be under pressure. I, I think some of that is still premature. Look, Milan have, have gone four games in Serie A without winning. It's worth mentioning the first two of those games are against Juventus and Napoli, so not so shocking. I think it's compounded by the fact there was this humiliating 3-0 defeat to Paris Saint-Germain in the Champions League in the middle of all that. They did also then go and beat Paris Saint-Germain back at San Siro, which I think seemed like it was moving things back in the right direction but yes they then had this incredible collapse from 2-0 up against Lecce at the weekend so it's been a mixed bag but I think that the fan reaction the suggestion that purely maybe under pressure is perhaps a little bit ahead of where the club's at I don't actually think his job is under quite as much pressure yet as some people are, are suggesting but there have been some some situations that, that haven't helped him and unfortunately one of those was against Lecce he brings on Yunus Musa. Sorry to move us off Pulisic, but he brings on Yunus Musa at half time and, and sticks him at right back for Calabria, who was injured. Mm. And in the end, both goals come really um it, to some extent at, at, from mistakes that, that Musa makes. Nikki, since you mentioned Yunus Musa, like let's let's talk about not just specifically his role on the weekend, but kind of big picture. Because this is a player that I thought was really ahead of schedule with Milan. When he got there, I thought, all right, this is a guy who's going to be struggling for minutes off the bench. All of a sudden, he's a starter. Obviously, you know, comes off the bench this past weekend. But what do you think of his performances so far? And as that Milan midfield starts to get healthier, how realistic is it that he's going to stay uh, in that starting eleven? Yeah, so so one pick part of the, the Milan picture and this story with Pioli and, and how he's under pressure and... Uh, as a part of it with Pulisic, with, with all of these um, stories, one connecting thread is the injuries. Milan have had a lot of injuries this season. And in fact, some of the pressure that's being applied to Pioli now is, hey, maybe this is an issue with how you're coaching the players. Maybe some of this um, responsibility falls on the fitness coach, Matteo Osti. And there's even some pressure for Pioli to, to get rid of Osti and, and make a change um, at his fitness coach. Musa, I think, has to some extent been this sort of victim of his own versatility because mm. Pioli has 
from the from day one has talked about him as a midfielder who sees can slot into different positions. He he wants him to be an attacking midfielder. Sometimes he can break the lines. He also wants him to be a defensive midfielder. He also thinks he can play out on the right hand side. And then you see that in the game against Lecce, where it's okay. I need a replacement right back because Calabria is another player who's injured, and he puts him at right back and. And I just don't think that Moose is ready to play games at right back for Milan. He, he lost um, Sansone on, on the first goal completely, the corner. Uh, he was caught way too high up the pitch on the break that led to Lecce's second goal. So again, it's almost a combination of this injury situation, which is club-wide. It doesn't just relate to the Americans. And then Musa being this player who purely views as versatile, things he can do different things with when you're that guy and you're still adjusting, as you just said, perhaps ahead of schedule to playing in a new league at a high level and um, to be thrust into all sorts of different positions at once, is it's a big ask. Jack of all trades, master of none, right? That's my worry, mm. not only for Eunice Musa, but actually it, it's great that you're talking about right backs because I want to talk about the other Americans at Juventus and both Timothy Weah and Weston McKinney have been kind of put into this right wing back role and actually competing with each other under Maximo Allegri. Obviously, Timothy Weah is injured right now, but are we seeing a case where the only way both are on the field would be in an injury case uh, in the midfield? Are they both competing competing excuse me, for this right back um, role under Maximo Allegri? Allegri? Um, to some extent they are, but also not completely. Um, I think that Allegri likes them both. He's, he's spoken positively about both of them. He's um, certainly sort of described Weston McKinney the other day as, a, as the devastating player, despite some, some technical issues he still sees in his game. But it, it's almost complicated just by how good McKinney has looked when he has played at that right wing back slot. You've seen in some games, Allegri has used them both together. He's put McKinney inside as the mezzala, the, the half wing is what they would say in Italy. Um, really a box to box midfield role. But when Weyer hasn't been in the team, he lets McKinney play outside at right wing back. And in my opinion, all of McKinney's best performances this season have been when he has been out there at right wing back. I thought it was exceptional in the win over Fiorentina, really impressive. And I almost think that role to me just seems to suit his skill set a little more in, in the way that Allegri wants that role to be interpreted. Allegri wants extremely high energy from his wing backs. He wants them to be, um, and this is something that um, we've heard a bit from, from Tim Witt, wants them to be defenders first, but he also wants them to to get up and down that, that flank. And Juan Cuadrado did that role really effectively for Juventus for years. And I think probably um, Allegri almost stumbled into this solution of McKenney being just as hard of a workhorse, just as willing to, to put the running in and to, to get up and down the pitch. But he's looked very strong there and he's been there. Where, of course, we know for his previous club sides, for the US men's national team, he tends to play higher up the pitch. He's used to playing more as a forward or a wide forward. And I think that the adjustment for him to the defending he can get there. I think he's talked about it as a positive that I've got to learn to defend better, but I don't think he does it as well as McKenney right now. So it's, it's a bit of a balancing act. I think they definitely can be in the team together, but to me and just what I've thought watching them play so far, I think McKenney has been the better performer at right wing back. So you're losing something by moving him out inside to make space for, for Tim Weyer.